Well, oh, yeah. here we are live, and I'm what? joined by a very special guest, none other than Mr. Ryan Stone. How are you? Man, God save the king. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk to many Brits anymore. It's been you. Actually, there's two this week. You and this guy is named uh, Roland. Ro oh. They've made books already. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. What's his, uh, what's his niche? Um, do you know what the Longhouse is? Mm, not sure. All right, so it's like a mix of, of like a Bronze Age pervert and Tradcon oh. kind of together. It's hard to explain. I'm sure they have a better name for it. I don't want to do them in a, uh, a disservice here by getting it all wrong, but that's how I interpreted it anyway. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I know Bronze, obviously no Bronze Age pervert, but what is it sort of part of that that sort of sphere of guys? Yeah, like the decline, yeah. but not so much saving the West. I don't know. Just sort of getting getting ripped and getting a suntan and well, not even the ripped suntan part of it. More so the uh, the fall of Rome kind of stuff. But whatever, whatever. It was uh, it was fun stuff. Okay, okay. esoteric right wing politics that explains it. Yeah, I mean, I really <laughs> I enjoyed uh, uh, Bronze Age Pervert's book. Actually, um, I thought he's a, he's a very good writer. And then I, and then I read all about how fascistic it was, which I hadn't really. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's it was an interesting read, and I quite liked. There were certain elements of it, like he writes that you should. He enjoys going. I don't know if you remember this part in, in his book. He writes about going to the red light areas in cities. He's like, yeah, I love to go to the red light area because it's sort of this zone in the city that is kind of unfiltered. You know how everything else is under. Oh, sort of I knew corporate. you'd love that. That's your yeah, stick. yeah. I thought it was fucking amazing because I thought I thought this guy's meant to be this right wing sort of like tub. I thought it was all going to be tub thumping. You know, just go to the gym and do pull ups and stuff. And 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 he's talking about jerky off in the red light areas. I thought this is amazing. <laughs> well, if you're gonna do it, you got to do it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because basically what he, he kind of says is that, uh, you know, everything's kind of corporatized now, isn't it? Everything's like yeah. Starbucks or it's the Disney store or it's, you know, whatever. And he says, you know, the one area in cities where it's sort of you're not I can't remember the exact phrase, but you're not under the sort of corporate glare is the red light area. So he loves to go to the red light areas and just let loose. Dude, I, I thought, love amazing. that take. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's, so Roland is not so much that one. I like it, too. From my understanding, it was basically he's taking philosophy like the Nietzsche, Camus, those type of guys and he's just bringing yeah. it with like 4chan language to appeal to that specific demographic which worked like a charm oh, right. and it's okay. angered all the right people like all the people that I dislike have really been angry at the book so I'm like it can't be it can't be that bad of a thing he did I just What's wish I tried man have you listened to his podcast Caribbean Rhythms uh I I think maybe I listened to one episode or something yeah good. like I tried I really tried it's hard like I like the content I just it's like listening to a Slavov Zizek lecture. If you've ever heard one of those, I just can't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. It's my Canadian ears. We're messed. Yeah, <laughs> but I'd rather hear about you, dude. I never wow. hear about you, and you're actually. Are you in London? Finally, I am in or... London right now. Yeah, Jeez. in London. It's like you're never home. You're basically dancing around everywhere in the Eastern Bloc that's not in war right now. Is you'd be there exactly. picking up exactly. chicks. Exactly. Well, I've been doing a lot of traveling. And actually, even this year, I've already been to a few places. Like I was over more your side of the world, really. I was in Puerto Rico. I <laughs> yes, was in like next door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was in um I was in Miami. I, I went to LA. Uh where else was I? Oh yeah, Mexico City with Tusk. Um mm. we were in Mexico City. That was the first thing. Teaching some students over there. Then Puerto Rico, I had a student there. Uh Miami met up with uh you know, the fresh and fit guys and some other people. And then um, Los Angeles, I had a client there. So that was a very exciting part, uh, beginning to the year. And then I came back over to Europe, came to London where it's freezing and dark and grim. And um, my mood just, I did this last year as well. And then my mood just crashes like that. And I'm just like, oh, woe is me. And so oh, I got a case of the sads. A little bit, a little bit. I think it's a real thing. Uh, well, like like Bronze Age Pervert and all those guys say, you know, it's all about suntan, isn't it? I, should, I need to be sunning my balls somewhere, basically. Yeah, well, it's the vitamin D, the seasonal affective disorder is a thing. Up here in, like, the northern territories, you actually yeah. get medical uh, permits to, like, sun tanning. So you can write that <laughs> off your medical bills. Can you? Yeah, so with the you, sun tanning you, boost. They, you literally need that. It helps cheer you up. I know there's some yeah. testosterone stuff, but eh. it really I just feel make... bad for those guys sun tanning their balls, man. Because, <laughs> like, you're a white guy. You've been yeah. to someplace really warm. You know how easy it is you burn, right? Mm. Now, picture your most fragile and sunless part of your body and you're just exposing it to direct sun and then not expecting things to go wrong 
<laughs> Can you imagine? There's probably some kids who, you know, I say kids like 18, 19 year olds or whatever, who've yeah. read this stuff on, on Twitter and have gone out, you know, and thought, right, okay, so I've, I've had my cold shower, I've had my ice cold bath, you know, I've read Nietzsche, um, and now <laughs> well, I'm going to I read my... somebody who parag- paraphrased yeah. it for me. <laughs> yeah, and, and now I'm gonna, I, and now I'm gonna suntan my nutsack, and they they genuinely think this is the right, you know, this is the way of men, and then they do it, and they end up in the hospital. I mean, you could, you know, yeah. you could get into trouble with that stuff. That's what it makes me wonder too. It's like somebody tells you it's good, but they don't say yeah. why, they don't say how, they don't say what purpose. They, oh no, it's good. And if yeah. his, if he's got enough Twitter followers, you're like, I mean, it's kind of yeah. like the Tate thing right now. By the way, I have the funnest meme right now. You're gonna love it. Where yeah, like I'm taking Neil Strauss photos. And putting I, them on anti Tate tweets to see if I, anybody notices. Like some people do, but a lot don't. <laughs> it's kind of funny. That's quite funny. I saw that one earlier, actually. I saw that. that, that. And they, they, there is there is quite a striking resemblance, isn't there? I mean, if Tate yeah. was when Tate was a little less, you know, Jack than he is now, there was definitely a resemblance there, wasn't there? Yeah, but that's just I just find it hilarious. Nobody even looks anymore. This is why it's crazy, and I love your take on things because it's just. Everybody's insane. Nobody's attached to reality. Yes, I get it. It's mostly online. So, like, why can't you take the piss with this stuff? Like, you well, have had some banger tweets now that you're having a bit more levity with it, where you realize that, like, the audience, the only way to reach them is to kind of, like, acknowledge the clown show around you. Because your yeah. space is, is bad. Well, I guess we're in the same space, but, like, the pickup space and the red pill space is just full of so much tardation, you know? Yeah, it really is. And I think what you've done well... I was talking to Jack Napier about this earlier because we did a we did a show earlier and I saw that. And yeah, we were talking about uh, we're going to go through the forty eight laws of power and talk about that. So um, we were saying because because you sort of uh, you really use this stuff for your benefit, don't you? Commercially, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you really take the retardation and run with it, don't you? Dude, that Matt Walsh ad and that Tate ad and that Pat Stedman ad, those things, I've made like a hundred times the effort I put into it worth of revenue off of those. They're the greatest. Well, it's I mean, just, you, it's so you much have, fun. You have been slated by some of the biggest names in the sort of right wing, <laughs> you know, sphere, haven't you, really? I mean, so you need to get Jordan Peterson on side. You need to somehow piss off Jordan Peterson. Well, the daughter, maybe. Honestly, the Abba and Preach is the newest one. They're throwing out shade left right and center i'm like i need to get one of those guys calling me an asshole that'd be great yeah sorry for swearing <laughs> one of those guys calling me a big fat jerk <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of amazing how you uh you know you the, the problem i have with this and actually this this leans into your book a little bit because it's yeah. it's an elemental frame i mean your frame is obviously very good in yeah. this thing because you you get all of this you know you get people saying things and, and throw you know you, you you deal with the troll <laughs> and you you either don't care or you don't allow it to emotionally affect you and the issue that i have and this is a lack of frame on my part is that in yeah. the past sometimes i've allowed it to not emotionally affect me not to say i'm going to go home crying to bed or anything but you know what i mean you get angry yeah. you get you get reactive and all that kind of thing and um you can't allow that to happen can you well i mean you could but you guys got to understand the con- i think that's the thing for me because when I first started on the internet, it was the same thing with like uh, the gay Lou Boyle and Anthony Johnson. That kind of got under my skin a bit. Yeah. And then after like a year of it, I just kind of like, I realized like, what's the consequence? Somebody like Abu Americans threatening to kill me right now. If he ever sees me in the street, he's never going to see me. It's has he never gonna... has he, is he throwing shade at you? Has he actually said that? Yeah. Well, okay. Oh, Abu so, Americans. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. I thought you, yeah, yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. We were, uh, Mish was explaining a lot of like the Quran stuff to me. And yeah. how Muhammad's first wife was like a, a wealthy benefactor and an older woman. And so mm. I made a, a crass joke about, and I'm not making the joke now if anybody's in the chat, where, oh, so we got like a sugar mama to pay for his first empire. And Mish thought it was funny. And then Abu was like ready to like fly planes into the buildings. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's funny because he's sitting here talking about, yeah, this is how you handle eight wives, get them to tie your shoes. I'm like, dude, if that's all it takes to make you fly off the handle, there is no way your two wives aren't running roughshod on you. And I thought about it <laughs> and I'm like, there's like a real benefit to this. Cause like we can preach about how frame is good left, right and center. But if I can show a visceral example of, like, that's a big Twitter brand. If he can lose his mind over nothing, what chance do I have? I'm like, well, you have tons of chances. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, it is amazing how, but I think one of the problems is people that are very plugged into Twitter 
it gets under their skin. And that's one of the reasons that I took a bit of a step back from Twitter over the last year or so. One, one, not the only reason, but one of the reasons. Because yeah. it can get kind of annoying dealing with all the, the, the idiots on there. But what I've discovered, which I knew before anyway, really, is that the best thing <laughs> is never read your notifications or comments and then it's fine. It just doesn't... <laughs> it, it just doesn't touch... I've got 100 people underneath calling me gay and I'm just like, I'm not even... I'm, I'm just totally oblivious to it. Dude, I love those. I, I, I mean, the reason I love them, it's not because they're entertaining or clever, because most of the time they're not. It's just like, for a lot of these guys, you didn't exist six months ago. Like, there was no Troy Francis ever. And mm. now, it's like, my reason to exist is to ruin this guy forever. Like, imagine having, like, Napoleon had that kind of pull. The Austrian painter had that kind of pull. But Troy Francis gives yeah. a, a line making fun of green tweets. And all of a sudden, five people have made it their MO to hate you forever. That's power, man. That's power. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? And we're just these idiots <laughs> shooting, shooting the, shooting the shit on the internet. You know. Well, that's the best part of it, though. It kind of shows you this isn't the space isn't real. It's not as serious as you think. And I mean, you've been, mm. you've been in the game. Like I was in for like a decade, but then I got mm. out, got in a relationship. You've been in the game most of your life. A couple of relationships aside, so you yeah. already know, like not letting girls see you sweat, not taking them too seriously, mm. is like a survival thing. Because none of the stuff yeah. they say mattered, not in the end of it. Well, yeah, and actually, that's a very interesting um, sort of lens on this. How much of this stuff actually matters? I think you put it in the, your book, actually, um, Praxology, Volume 1. Um, it's, it a book. it's a good book. It's a good book, guys. Link below. Go and grab a copy. But um, you, you say in the book uh, something like, you don't have to care about anything that you don't want to care about. Yeah. Um. Uh, but, and, and I agree with that. But e on top of that, most things you don't need to care about anyway. One thing I noticed, and, and perhaps this is just experience of having been around this space online for a few years, but all of these things that blow up, you know, you get these huge beefs that blow up. You're like, oh, my God, have you seen that video that so-and-so's made about you? Oh, my God. And you've got thousands and thousands of comments. You know, a couple of weeks later, everyone's forgotten about it. It, it literally doesn't. It's literally as if. Yeah. It didn't happen. And I've seen I this, owe... not, not just talking about me. I've seen this with other content creators. Other content creators have had like supposedly like career ending things thrown yeah. at them or like exposed or whatever. And people go, oh, my God, have you seen this? Have you seen that? Blah, blah, blah. They just carry on. It makes it makes literally no difference. It's like this weird Orwellian kind of thing where, you know, it's, it's almost erased from history. Yeah. But I don't think it ever existed. Like, honestly, I'd swear to God, the guys that easiestly under or have the easiest time understanding frame are old, like, 90s pro wrestling fans. Because they understand the concept of kayfabe. And they understand yeah. the concept, like, how uh, women, like, emote. That's how they use language to kind of, like, process emotions and figure out what their reality is. You know, the My Truth stuff. And it yeah, carries yeah. over so, like, dealing with women and dealing with brands on Twitter a lot of overlap and i'm just gonna you can fur from that what you like <laughs> infer from that what you like but you know what i mean like yeah i'm sure you've been in a fight before with a girl where she's yeah. yelled at you over something stupid mm, all the time all yeah the time. and when we're young we probably took it seriously and we like listen to the words and we're like processing the words and we try and fix the problem and then nothing gets solved and then one day you're just like i'm hung over i don't feel like dealing with this and you just yeah. tell her to shut up and then she shuts up and nothing happens and you just realize well, like why did all that fight happen yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, one thing that I've learned over the years, and we, we probably all know this intellectually, probably most people watching this know this intellectually, that <laughs> the less you care, the, the better you, the better life you have, or the more power you have, right? Yeah, uh, the less you it's care. It's a cardinal rule of relationships, wasn't it? Exactly. And we intellectually know that. I probably knew that intellectually when I was in my 20s, prob probably. And certainly in my 30s, I knew that. But it was very hard to actually live it, you yeah. know? Very hard to actually live in. And I'm not sure, unless it's people reading your book or watching, you know, your your channel or, I don't know, whatever, you know, delving into the red pill space. Maybe yeah. maybe they've got a better chance because they're intellectually aware of it and they can embody that in their behavior. But for me, it had to almost get to the point of, well, I'm so I'm so ground down by life now that I just literally don't care. And you what I find now, <laughs> I like I like literally don't give a damn what she says. You know, she 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 texts me, she messages me, and she's like, "Oh, you did this try, I can't believe it." Blah blah blah. And I literally just don't even answer because I just don't give a shit whether you know. Okay, yeah. you're gonna leave me. Oh, you're gonna leave me. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, yeah, none of this like wait four hour to answer the text yeah. games. You're just like, no, no. And yeah. four hours later, you maybe feel enough to say hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they always come back. And it's the amazing thing. But I don't know. Can a guy get to that 
level of not giving a damn. Depends on the guy. I find some guys can, and it's not so much not giving a damn. Like, I don't want to have, like, the Mark Manson zero Fs given. Mm. I think Mm. it's once you understand the consequences of your actions and you realize they're not as bad as you think they are, because most guys' fears are emotional. Like, you know what I mean? Like, with the wife, oh, I don't want to piss off the wife. She'll divorce me and whatever, and nothing ever happens. Yeah. So once you realize the consequences aren't really there, then all of that fear and anxiety and eroticism is just a self-inflicted prison. And for your first part, I totally agree. Um, a lot of guys, and I used to see this in my Patreon all the time, where he'll espouse, I have this as my goal, and then everything they do is exactly the opposite of that. Yeah. But they don't yeah. connect those two. So like, I think the big key for a lot of guys is just to draw attention to the incongruency. And that's where people realize, like it's, Troy, I don't know if I tell you enough of this in like the Twitter DMs, but my favorite part is mm. when you see a guy, he's been like six months of work, he's gotten his body in shape and this, and then he's like, I just real, and he'll explain like the cardinal rule of relationships, but he doesn't use the terms. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I've just, I just don't care if my wife's happy anymore. And the weirdest thing is the sex has been the best ever. I'm like, oh, so the cardinal rule of relationships, right? And then they finally make the connection between the stuff that they read and repeat off of the Rolo live streams and their yeah. actual life. Yeah. It's a magical thing, man. It's magical. It's like, oh, yeah. It's like <laughs> that light bulb moment. This is a great quote. It's not your job to keep the peace, which yeah. um, you refer to in the book. I mean, that's, again, it's, it's, it's little realizations like that do help, actually. It, it, it has been uh, little phrases like that, little nuggets that, that start to chip Tools. away at, that start to chip away at things. You're like, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, it's not my job to keep the peace. And yeah. just that permission changes your behavior or can change your behavior in the relationship right i wouldn't even say permission i'd say like framing you know Mm. like for this one for Mm. example a lot of guys know that it's like if your girl's freaking out it's emotions whatever but then like to connect these to that that's why i keep calling like everybody calls this stuff a toolbox yes (laughs) can you put that on the uh you need to you need to put that on the cover i like that hey it (laughs) saved six more lives than sanctioned it i'll just say right now Uh, what was I go? Oh yeah, yeah. So I was, I was saying, it's like um, uh, it was about drawing connections. They're not caring. Oh yeah. So you realize there's no consequences to things. So what do you do then? Well, the person's freaking out and they're trying to get a rise out of you. The standard guy gets angry at it and starts yelling at the girl back. You don't treat me that way. But then it shows like you're treating the girl as your equal, or not even as your equal. It's like your nemesis. It's like, dude, that's your wife, or that's your girlfriend, or that's your plate. Why are you yeah. yelling at her as if she's the John Anthony to your Rolo Tomasi? <laughs> and then you realize, well, what do I do then? Well, what are your options? Well, I can either ignore it, which, you know, she's in your house. You can't really ignore her forever or, you know, poke fun. Why wouldn't you poke fun? Yeah. At that yeah. point, it's funny. And it's not saying like, oh, I'm laughing this stuff off. You're actually doing it as opposed to saying you're doing it. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Exactly. Um, would, I mean, you describe in the book, there's a, there's a, a, a bit towards the end where you're talking about how basically to paraphrase, basically, you do what the hell you want. Um, and you're, you know, you've, you've gone through various different career changes from the military to the, the corporate stuff to doing what you're doing now. And you yeah. say, you know, your wife has sort of followed always, always been cool with that, um, because you've just done what you wanted to do. And you've been unapologetic and, and so on. I'm paraphrasing yeah. very badly here. But you know, no, it's pretty good. Better writing um, than I gave out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how much of this is based on how you set things up at the beginning right is it is it because you've you've set up from the the start you were like that and therefore that's persisted through the relationship i mean if you'd have been like a super you know pushover for 10 years and then all of a sudden you start coming out with this stuff that would have been a much more difficult proposition right it's funny i don't think i've ever told anybody about this troy but yeah it was Mm. There's this common lingo everybody uses where I used to be alpha, slowly went beta. And it's kind of cringe, but I get it. It's where guys had more frame yeah. early in the relationship than lost it. Yeah, and yeah I was yeah. definitely along those lines with this one. But I, I think everybody, to some extent, has their own frame accidentally, but they're not very self-aware of it or strongly attached. Yeah. And I probably have what most guys do. Like, first off in the relationship, you're setting the terms, you're leading things, and that's great. And the girl's attracted to it. And then, you know, one nagging at a time, one you know, pretty please. One time she cried and she gets her way at a time. You do that like a thousand times and it's slowly. Yeah. And then you realize you never really had a frame. It was just never tested. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I would say, but then, cause it's, I'm like a lot of the married red pill guys where you get to that point where you really are at a low point and then you, you know, type it online. You know, why, what's wrong with my fucking wife or. Yeah. And then you get there and then you realize how to build your frame and build it up again. So I don't think it's, it's, it's better if you do it at the start. 
but I don't think you have to. Okay. It just makes it harder. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, okay, you, well, I mean, you're obviously you're single, but you've been yeah. in relationships and they didn't yeah. work out, but mm. it's, it's never been like your frame hasn't exactly made or break, break the relationship. It just made or broke Troy Francis. Right. <laughs> I'm taking a yeah, leap of faith much. here on this one. So <laughs> pretty much. I mean, I've been in various relationships of, of differing lengths mm -hmm. throughout my life. And the, the early ones were a complete disaster. Like when I was my first proper girlfriend really was when I was 20 and we were together for about, well, that was a short one when it was only about six months. That was a complete shit show. Then <laughs> I, got, I got together then with another girl after, a, after a little bit of philandering, I got together with another girl. We ended up staying together for about four and a half years. And Jeez. again, it was, it was, a, it was a classic, classic car crash slow car crash of, of starting off where i was the prize and she she liked me and what you know for whatever reason and blah 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 and then it, and then it slowly sort of you never you know, told me this troy well that's you know, like roosh link that was if you were roosh that would have been your start of neo-masculinity right then you know that so wasn't well, his ukrainian girlfriend four and a half years she dumped him and then he found god like the next week yeah, well, I just found alcohol, really. So, <laughs> it's, <laughs> whichever works. Yeah, exactly. But um, no, it was like lack of knowledge was was the the problem that I had at that point, and it, it's kind of weird because, I mean, on the one hand, I've always been fairly cynical about like relationships and stuff because my dad, you know, my parents divorced, and then my father was in another related marriage, and that was a bit of a, a crap show, sh shit show, and everything else. So, getting really deep here now, man. Sorry, sorry. No, Probably it's, it's you're just ex describing my childhood. It was like yeah. pretty amazing. So, so I was talking to Jack about this earlier as well, actually. So I, I never had a particularly white picket fence kind of idea of, oh, I just can't wait to meet that one special woman and it's all going to be brilliant kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Like I never, I never really bought into that. I always felt like marriage was, I always felt like people just kind of settled. It was a bit like, yeah, okay, well, all right, I'll settle on this one then, whatever, you know. And I always <laughs> thought it was a bit, it was a bit arbitrary and I, I was kind of It's aware. like you're giving up on your goals and dreams and that's like the secondary prize thing. Yeah, so I was I always sort of had that, but weirdly, simultaneously, I also had some what you might call blue pill conditioning. And I think a lot of that was from movies and 80s TV shows, you know, things like Saved by the Bell or like Back to the Future or stuff like that. You know, when the kind of the kind of average kid ends up with the girl, that kind of thing. Like I still I'd still internalized enough of that and really? enough of the sort of be vulnerable and you know show your feelings kind of thing. To, to royally cock up my first few relationships. Well, that's nice. I mean, it's not nice, but it's <laughs> like, I was just clueless. I never got any guy. Like everybody's always like, my dad messed me up. My mom messed me up. They never told me anything. So it's almost like I didn't have any bad advice. Cause I, like advice would be nice. That's what I mean. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't same really... thing. Like my parents divorced when I was, I'm assuming you were like, I was five. Were you about there? Seven. Five to seven? Seven. Yeah. 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 I find most kids who get divorced, their parents are about that age, but, um, and then the second marriage is like absolute train wreck. And I love when I see these trads sitting here talking about how great marriage is. I'm like, dude, there's no fancy words you're going to use to convince that 50% of the population that watched the disastrous, acrimonious divorce and think, well, Matt Walsh does have a point. Maybe I'll just pretend my childhood doesn't exist. It's like, it's not going to happen. But then they kind of will try to shame you or sort of say, well, if you were a real man, you, you'd make it work. Dude, I worry that, about that those guys. Thing, there's a lot of guys who get that, like they let their families bully them into this kind of stuff. Mm. And of course they're miserable mm. because if, if your family can bully you, that yeah. wife who wanted like a guy to look up to, she has to bully him out of resentment. Yeah. How, oh. how, dude, I wouldn't be able to make my living if it wasn't for those guys. So I'm not like, I'm appreciative, but at the same time, like it sucks. I'd rather be out of business. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or they accuse you of nihilism. I mean, one thing when I was yeah. a bit more spiky on Twitter, maybe I should go back to that, but you know, I was Dude. doing a lot of tweeting about like, Hey, the player lifestyle, man, don't get married. It's, it's crap. And you know, just go around and have sex until you die sort of thing being quite, yeah. and, and then you get accused of nihil nihilism. Oh, he's a nihilist, you know, as if that's a bad thing. I mean, that's, what's fucking wrong with that? <laughs> that's what I'm wondering. You notice that it's the same mm. as when girls try to shame you like real man stuff. Like they never explain why it's bad. They just assume it's bad by their tone and you're supposed to get with the program. Well, I was, and I thought about that. I'm like, why, if you're going to call me a bad name, you better make me believe it's a bad name first. Don't make me do all that work. That's just lazy, lazy well, hating on your part you know yeah I expect I better yeah i noticed a few a couple of years ago that the term or the word nihilist had suddenly become a slur for these people you know it's like oh he's a, a nihilist and 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 what you know and, and like you say they didn't really explain it's just like that is a bad thing it's like saying yeah. he's soy or he's 
beta or something. He's an oh, he's just a nihilist, and he's not one of us uh, good, strong men who are building up society with our seventeen white children and you know and all the rest, all the rest of that nonsense. Yeah. Um, I wish they'd have read the whole book though. Like they made it halfway in. They got to the God is dead part. They're like, well, that's all I need to see, and they missed the entire <laughs> second half, which yeah. explains why nihilism is a process. It's not like an end state. But I yeah. mean, whatever. But I find, I mean, the thing that annoys me about all those guys is it's, it, it's, I don't know what annoys me about it. It's probably, obviously, there's a kind of a visceral it's the reaction. Delusion. It, it is, it is, the, it is the delusion. It's the delusion that you just have to do this. And yeah. this, by the way, is this incredibly conventional thing that 90% of the population have been doing for millennia anyway. It's not like we're talking about doing some out, you know, kind of cool, super cool, like, radical thing like yeah getting, getting shacked up and having a couple of kids do this and you're going to be a hero and it's all going to be great um well the evidence points strongly against that and actually you know even going around london i go around london you see plenty of parents and um i, I mean i see i see more dads that i can count and i'm not i'm not i don't i'm not going to do sort of anti having children rant here or anything like that but i've seen plenty of family men who look miserable as sin you know like literally <laughs> dead behind the eyes dragging their screaming kids around the London underground and, you know, with their dumpy, unattractive and hectoring wives sort of, you know, shouting at them to carry the Ikea bags. I mean, it doesn't always look like a barrel of laughs. And I, I, it worries me that this bill of goods is being sold on Twitter to young oh, yeah. guys. Oh, yeah, just find a good woman. You know, ignore these degenerate playboys. Um, and then More meat for the grinder, Troy. More meat for the grinder. Exactly. Well, I mean, it was the guys used to call it the plantation, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. all the MGTOW guys. Which and I, yeah, and I I I never liked that because I find it's like a a male. I don't like using the term manosphere because it doesn't exist. But when guys are online, they seem to love the hyperbole, which yeah. kind of bothers me because like you shouldn't have to sell it. It should sell itself. Yeah, yeah. Like case in point, the Freedom Convoy. They're they're calling themselves Freedom Fighters. I'm like dudes. Like Trudeau was a dick. He broke the law. You don't have to start playing it off like you're Che bringing the army into Puerto Rico or whatever. It's yes. like, it's all right. You don't have to be freedom fighters. You had trucks and bouncy castles. Like <laughs> the fact that he brought in the stormtroopers and horses for that, it sells it. You don't need to sell it. Same thing with those guys. They have to call it a plantation. Mm. It's not an mm. acrimonious divorce. It's divorce grape. It's not. Mm. Yeah. Everything always has to be like, it's not murder. It's absolute disembowelment. You're like, dude, slow down. Yeah. Why are yeah. you so hyperbolic about this? Mm. And I think it's because they're mm. worried that if they don't, that nobody will believe them. And that's the same reason like the Matt Walsh's of the world are like, you got to do the family and the kids and the white picket fence or else like they're playing it like it's utopia. Not that, hey, this is a life choice. It's going to be difficult. There's going to be trade offs and there's going to be parts of it that you won't the consequences well, that you'll have to accept. But if you say that, that, they're worried you won't want one. Is that Matt Walsh's um, shtick then? Because I have to say, I haven't heard him. I haven't listened to enough of him or watched enough of him to know. The, the main thing that I've seen him doing is arguing with with trans people or talking about drag queen story hour. It's like this drag queen story hour, yeah. you know, and all that. But does, is, is, he, is one of his pillars, oh, you need to do the family. And well, he's right. a Catholic with like six kids. Right. Okay. But he's got enough money and he's in that like gated community. So we can kind of pull that off. And he's trying to bring everybody else to it. I've seen there's a bunch of Catholics on Twitter and I got kind of a love hate relationship with the community. Mm. Uh, there's the first half, which is pretty good. And they have they're having the same crisis of faith that the Christians are having. Right. But then there's the mm. other half. They call them, I think, five minute Christians or some people are calling them the longhouse where they're essentially just feminists, feminist with the funky hat, you know, mm. Mm. They're the ones that are just treating the woman like the golden calf and that God isn't actually angry when they start worshipping it by accident. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the problem with the Matt Walsh kind of thing is that it, it, it unless you've got enough money, it is a bit of a grind. I mean, it's not utopia. I mean, I don't think, I don't think, I think it's a grind whether you have money or not. Mm. Cause it's not like your marriage is going to last forever. How many, how many billionaires do we have to point out that have like divorces under their belt or millionaires or, you know, lawyers and doctors, super successful, financially wealthy people, their marriages are in the shitters. So yeah. obviously it's not money. That's the big thing. I could say it's, it's labor. And I've never seen it to the point where like a woman's like, you didn't change enough diapers. So I'm leaving them. Like people can handle shoveling shit for a living. Mm, mm. I think for the most part, it's like, I know some people it's, they don't want to grow up. And I was talking with Allie about this one. They call it uh, postpartum depression is post not clarity yeah. for women. 
<laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I do think there's something to it because you get a lot of women who are like they are they're baby rabies. And so the first available mm. guy, they kind of like convince themselves they're attracted to him and they fuck like maniacs. And then sorry to swear. No, uh, they have their kid. And then, you know, once the baby's born, they have basically got their F trophy. And now mm. it's like, oh, I don't actually kind of like this guy. Like the feelings are gone. And now they're kind of just processing it as depression. So you you reckon that's a real phenomenon then, where it's almost like it's almost like waking up after a one night stand when you've had you've been drinking and you wake up and you're like, oh Jesus, what have I done? Is that, Dude, that it kind does of have a lot of like the same parallels? You notice that though? Like, have you ever seen those situations? Like, I've, I know you've yeah. seen the guy waking up with like the ugh. yeah, well, yeah. The wives are doing the same thing, and you look well, at the and... husbands, and it's never like you, I've never seen that happen with a husband who you look mm. at and go, dude, that's the greatest man ever. Why are you all depressed? It's always the guy where you're like. I see it. I, I can see it. I feel bad, mm. but I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Operation Chris says married for nine years, wasn't divorced great too. It was amicable. We just drifted apart after the kids got got to five, five years old, I guess. It's a pattern. Yeah, well, this is a pattern. This is well, this is when the kids I sorry to cut you off. It's like where it's no longer essential to have a father. It's nice to have because they're gone eight hours of the day. Yes. And that's the but, scary part when you realize like for most of these marriages, and I would argue those are the ones that like marriages of convenience or the settling that you're worried about i think that's what those ones are i really do mm, yeah don't you think though that the way that fatherhood is sold to us now by people on twitter and instagram is a bit soy to be honest in comparison yeah. to how it was because my grandfather right i don't know if we talked about this before my grandfather was an raf fighter pilot in world war ii oh, cool. um he was the classic sort of you know you know the kind of the alpha that all, all these people are banging on about he was he was sort well, of you that had guy. me at world war ii british air force yeah he was that kind of guy he was sitting sitting in the chair drinking brandy you know my grandmother was in the kitchen doing all the work he's just listening to opera go oh yes but but you know and, and very <laughs> patriarchal and people like that from his generation and then going back you know so, I mean, God knows what his father was like, but yeah. the father figure was quite distant, really. It wasn't this sort of touchy feely, I'm going to change the diapers kind of a kind of a thing that is encouraged now, yeah. or, or or I'm going to post all my pictures of my kids on Instagram. You know, oh, I'm taking, I'm look, look, he's riding his bike for the first time. The father was just off either working or in the pub. But that's the thing and, people gets weird about too, because you're like the way you say that, it makes it sound like he was just an ass and he was a horrible father, but. Well, like, I mean, but the kids always had a roof over their head. They were raised yeah. well. Nothing ever like hurt them. He was always protecting them. There was this different role. Yeah, no, I just. So it's not just, like he didn't love them. No, no, absolutely. And he, you know, supported supported the family. Brought up. I mean, he had he had four kids um, and supported them, and they they've all done 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 very well. So I mean, yeah, in that sense, great father. But what I'm saying is that w what seems to now be the modern or contemporary this is what fatherhood is just oh, yeah. seems a little put bit, a dress like, on with your daughter. Weird. On the one hand, we're meant to be in this like manosphere or whatever you want to call it, where everyone's like super alpha and everything. But then this presentation <laughs> of fatherhood seems a little bit like, I don't know, man. It just doesn't See, seem to fit very well. This is why I'm saying the manosphere sphere doesn't exist. It was that stupid Mother Jones article in 2012 because they wanted a reason to shit on Roosh and on like, I can't remember who the Christian was at the time, but they weren't part of the same niches. So they just had to give it an overarching niche. And that's why they called it manosphere. So yeah. they could paint everybody with the... So that's why everybody gets shit on now because Tate's in jail. That's exactly mm. why it's, the term exists. But mm. I agree because there's two mm. different groups of people. There's the guys that want to be fatherhoods, the simpish type stuff, and then there's the, the thuggish type stuff. I think Rollo and I talked about that where in the absence of any like guidance from other men, guys tend to drift towards either being simps or thugs. And it I think does. a lot of the discourse users are seeing that now. That's an interesting, uh, that's yeah. an interesting sort of, that's why you see it. Tate. Yeah. That's why you see Tate playing with his kids and it just looks off to you. Cause you're like, no, no, you were, you were a thug. You can't be playing simp. Or if you see Matt Walsh yelling at a transgender person, like he's a tough guy. It's like, come on, bro. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you fooling? Well, there's, there's a different school of thought with fatherhood though, actually, which I've seen with some people. Um, that is more like, okay, I am the super alpha dude. I'm jacked. I'm, you know, I smoke cigars. I do all this, you know, whatever, supercars. Do, they, so do these guys ever define kids. alpha, by the way? Sorry? Do they ever define alpha, these guys that keep saying they're super alpha or no? Well, no, but... You just know, whatever just, they have? Yeah, yeah. But just, 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 yeah, that, that, sort of, that sort of archetype. Um, And they want to have kids because it's the alpha thing to do. So oh, I'm going to have 15 sons. So they want to do that. But, and, and, and this is where... to you know, I credit them slightly. They they don't want to sink into the domestic thing. 
So it's like, right, I'm going to have 15 sons, but it's going to be with different, it's going to be with different mothers. They're going to be on different continents. I'm going to pay for everything because I'm the provider, but I'm not necessarily going to be there every second of the day, you know, sort of changing the nappies and singing nursery rhymes to the kids, which is, a, I mean, maybe in a way is a, is a sort of a return to the slightly more alpha model of the father, if you like. At least it's not sitting around knitting blankets and sort of posting pictures on, on Instagram. See, this is why I hate branding, branding and narcissism. Because you're mm. basically describing them like they're the Pepsi taste challenge. Like guys mm. aren't saying, I want to have a bunch of kids and I'm going to gear my life towards that. They're no, they have to pick like an archetype. Like I want to be yeah. the, I don't know what the equivalent is, the 1890s World War One pilot. Like that's my yeah. archetype. And that's like narcissistic fantasy. Because what do you do then? Well, I got to have a mustache because they had mustaches. They're jacked. So I got to be jacked. I got to kill a German because that's what they did back then. Yes. Meanwhile, the whole life could be a shambles. There was like a great article by uh, Last Psychiatrist about this. Like, if you white like white heels, you might be a narcissist. And he brought up uh, the Bob's and Vagine crowd, how mm. they like hot blondes wearing white heels. Meanwhile, you'll see the girl, and she's like a fat blob of a woman. She's horrible, but she's got the blonde hair and she's got the right shoes. So as long as she fills the check marks on that fantasy, then you ignore like the glaring reality staring at you. Like I'm sure you've seen this. You're in London, so there's like a lot of uh diversity you ever mm. seen those guys who have like white fever and they love white chicks but it's always like the horrendous white chicks but they're yeah, happy yeah, like yeah. she's a 10 yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. that's all narcissistic like fantasy stuff so when i hear guys saying i want to return to the 50s or i want to do the alpha lifestyle with the tons of kids like return to whatever i just look at it, it's like too much branding on the brain it's like hulk hogan when he started believing his real name was hulk hogan and said it's terry you know it's like just be yeah. terry yeah, <laughs> and that'd be a great talk dude if somebody wanted to have 15 kids and he was logistically talking about how do you sort it out like obviously mm. you can't change 15 sets of the diapers the girls got to do that and all this kind of it makes sense it's like MGTOWs I would love if MGTOWs were going their own way and like you talk about the best places to parasail or how to whittle yourself a, a, a great stick for whatever but it's always just like, hey, you know what I hate about whammon? Everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I thought that uh, Better Bachelor was going to go in that direction, actually, because yeah, he, was, yeah. he bought this van and I thought he was going to travel around and the content was going to be a bit more like, hey, look at my cool lifestyle. Dude, now that I'm would going be awesome. my own way. But obviously the, obviously the content is still, hey, look at this, look at what this 40 year old bitch did, you know, blah, blah, blah. She, <laughs> she thought she still had a chance and now look at her, you know, and all that. And that's it's seven million. When you start views. getting angry and vulgar, it sounds so out of character. I love seeing it because you're like, you're trying to throw in like a, a, an American accent. These <laughs> darn bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't what mean do to laugh, think, but oh, I love it. What do you think is, what is the stupidest thing that's happening in the space at the moment though, do you think? Oh, that idiot that was talking about drinking seawater. Oh, see that one? that? I don't remember. It's like Solbra or one of those guys, but he was like, did you know that seawater has the exact same minerals that your body needs to survive? It's like, you guys should drink seawater. <laughs> and I'm looking, I'm like, I thought the guys were like, you got to smoke to get testosterone up. My dad died of lung cancer. So like, obviously that's a bit of a soft spot for me. But then he was oh. like, literally, you need to drink seawater to thrive. I'm like, I wish guys would just start chugging seawater back. <laughs> Well, the, the, the testosterone thing, um, that was one of Tate's things, wasn't it? Cigars increase testosterone. You know, he stole things from everybody. It didn't really matter. He took all the stupidest takes and he just said it with a Bugatti. That's essentially it. And everybody mm. loved him for it because, dude, I wish I could be rich and run my mouth like an asshole. <laughs> That's like the American dream right now. Mm. Mm. But yeah, and it doesn't. It doesn't. Like, look, I, I have pipes. I like, I like smoking out of a pipe. I don't like cigars. By the time you get to the end, it's like chewing on a tire. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun and I enjoy it. And you get that little bit of a rush, like anything that you do with caffeine, but I'm not going to yeah. sit here and think, well, it's not just a, a vice that I have that I enjoy it. No, it's gotta be you saving the fucking West. And I hate that shit. It's like, why do you need everything in your life to be like, this is your Superman origin story. Like, really? Can't yeah. you just enjoy something that's not healthy for you because whatever I can do what I want. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to a few cigar lounges recently in the last sort of, sort of eight months or something like that. I mean, through like Sterling Cooper, I've, you know, kind of gone into it. And then some of those guys I was in, I How's went to, been, by the way, I haven't seen them since Christmas. Well, I, I've, I've had, I've said hello to him online a couple of times. I think I saw him last year, actually in person. I saw him in, uh, he was in Poland and we met up in, uh, uh, Krakow and we did, we filmed a, a live, uh, 
well, it was pre-recorded actually, but we filmed a like like a conversation together, which was pretty yeah. cool in a, in a cigar lounge. I went to a cigar lounge the other night with this um, with this girl, and um, she we went and chose the cigars. And I, I'm, I have really bad luck with cigars because cigars are quite hard to smoke, or they're quite hard to keep lit. Mm-hmm. I, problem that I have, right? It's quite hard to keep the, the damn thing lit. It's really frustrating. Oh, so you we, like taking your time with them? That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah, but then you, I, I don't know, man, what, what, whatever I do, the damn thing seems to go out and then you're just, <laughs> well, it, it, it's it's not ideal. So um, we we went into the humidor with the guy and he was showing us all the different things. He's like, oh yes, this one is, you know, like blah, 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 and going on, banging on, you know. And she chose one and I chose one and she lucked out because hers mm-hmm. was great. Hers smoked like a dream. Mine, of course, is this like impenetrable bit of wood that was going out every two, every two seconds. And I'm just, this is just not enjoyable, you know. Um, so I don't know, but maybe I need to, uh, apparently, apparently um, Sterling, was it Sterling? Sterling told me that Andrew Tate's uh, advice is that you should always use two matches when you light a cigar. Oh, for like a hotter, longer fire? Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. So I guess it could work. Take See, that away, I know the reason that's why I like the pipe because once you get the ember started in your pipe, it stays there, so you don't have to worry about like if I'm not inhaling this thing like a madman, it's gonna go out. But then that's yeah. the problem is that you always look like you're a Lord of the Rings fan, so there's like you got trade offs, right? But then again, with cigars, it always looks like you're desperately wanting to suck a dick but not feel embarrassed <laughs> about it. So I don't know. P- pick your homoerotic reference. It doesn't it, really it, matter. It, it, I mean, it's it's <laughs> funny, isn't it? How all of the same stuff gets taken up by people, isn't it? Like suddenly all of those guys are smoking cigars. All of those guys yeah. want to buy supercars. Like all of those guys, it's, it's, it's all the same. Follow sort the leader, of, man. It's all the same sort of genres of stuff, isn't it? There's nobody, well, there's few people who are actually saying, well, I'm doing something totally different. But for me, this is, you know. Yeah. Um, you know what it is? You know, guys just need to be led, right? A lot of guys do. Yes. A lot. I saw my deployment. Great example. My best buddy, uh, I talk about him a bunch. He mm. and I were deployed. We're messmates. Like we lived in the same mess. There's 15 of us. And I watched his department follow him around like a puppy. When he started getting into something, they'd get into something. He started drinking gin. They started drinking gin. He started like as a joke, he would like wear t-shirts, like ask me about this guy, Joe. And it was one of the guys in the crew, but nobody ever knew what it was about. And they just kind of had a laugh at it. All of a sudden, everybody was wearing these shirts. It was just amazing. Like these are all military guys deployed to the Gulf looking for pirates. And they were basically latched on to like the most charming personality there. It was a thing to watch. Well, it, it does astonish me, actually. I mean, it's it's kind of weird, isn't it? Because we are actively involved with this space where everyone yeah. and his uncle is banging on about how alpha they are, how macho they are, and how they go there. You know, I do my own thing. I don't listen to anyone else. You know, to hell with yeah, the Yeah, here's, here's 15 rational male takes that I kind of twisted around. They yeah. sound way, right? And yet people are so tribal. People are so troubled. And I mean, I mean, the, the biggest example, probably in recent years, we saw that with was was Trump. You know, now I'm not I'm not sure. I suppose it, it's kind of weird how getting standing in line with, behind a, a what do they call those guys? You know, those kind of um, demagogues. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. Well, that's yeah, a fancy kind of English how, word for this. We're going with demagogue. It's kind of funny how how standing in line behind a demagogue is seen as being the alpha thing to do. Because when surely, it's really just a sycophant. Yeah, because surely the real alpha thing to do is to say, well, to, to hell with that, dude. I'm going to do my own thing. See, that's why I hate alpha as a term. I hate how it's been. I blame Vox Day for this, too, where people have... It used to have a meaning, hey, man. This is alpha? Vox Day. This is Vox Day. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, alpha used to mean so, if it got a girl attracted so, to you, uh, it went. Uh, twump, twump. Uh, so, uh, yeah, very important. Uh, new update on, on twump. Uh, that's actually not half bad. <laughs> Yeah, do you know what I mean? Alpha used to mean things that got a girl attracted to you. And then beta was the things that got her to be comfortable with you, like boyfriend stuff. And then everybody, all of a sudden, because nobody believes in God anymore, they just replaced calling somebody good or godly with alpha. Yeah. And so yeah, it's supposed yeah, to yeah. be this placeholder word that everything is I like is alpha and everything I hate is beta. It's never yeah. anything that's actually good for any reason. It's always like Stedman will say, you know, being a sommelier and losing your passport by charging the Trump castle makes you alpha or... Tate would say, "You, if you haven't been to jail, you're not an alpha. <laughs> and it's just, it's weird because everybody's just like projecting their inner insecurities onto everybody else. And like, we're supposed to take them seriously. And like, obviously I won't. And I don't think you will. Well, it, it's just oh. all a bit tiresome, isn't it really? It's just, it is. um, I mean, well, you're not watching really... a crazy guy spiral in real time and try yeah. to convince you guys, like you're the problem. It's not my horrible narcissism and insecurity. Mm. It's you. 
what is, not coddling it. <laughs> what is the status with the with with Pat Stebman though? Is he off the hook now, or is it still going? No, on? I heard his court case is like in June or something like that. So he's gonna. So oh, I don't really? know. Maybe the political theater has kind of gone away, and they'll just let it go, or maybe he'll go to. Maybe he'll get his passport back. He can finally he move to Poland with his wife and kid. He can't travel outside the country. No, they took his passport because they worried about him being a flight risk. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but if you ever go on Twitter. Mm. And you talk about how you're going to be leaving the country or you have fake passports or you can bribe border guards and that. And then you get arrested. They will use that to tell the judge, to take your passport away so you can't leave. Yeah. <laughs> it's this crazy thing called rat yourself <laughs> out. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of, <laughs> it is kind of fascinating. I mean, the, the world we live in is so is so weird now, isn't it? And, and in a small way, or not, not even that small in all cases, we're seeing yeah. this in our own space because there are these people that, you know, we've known for years, and then suddenly they become part of the news agenda. Yeah. You know, and they're these kind of—it's it's, just—we're we're living in this weird hyper reality, aren't we? Where it's hard to say what's real and what's what's um, what's not. If that sort of makes any sense. That's I why mean, you've got, I, what, you've got, if you can touch it, it's real. I'm just—I fall back to that. That's yeah. all I can think about. And I did can't... I tell you? I, did I tell you? I saw Kanye West recently really? in um, a. Uh, in when I was in LA, right? So I was in LA. I was working with this was guy. Was he wearing the thing? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he wasn't. And um, and um, I don't know why I'm telling this story. But, well, I do kind of. So um, we and we were in this fancy bar in a hotel, and we were standing out looking out over the view of Los Angeles and blah blah blah. And then um, and then he comes in, and my the, my friend says, "Oh, there, there's Kanye." And look around. And say, oh, sure enough, there's Kanye West. And do you know what? He's just a dude. Yeah. And like before, I'd actually said to it, it, it's weird because, um, and, and, and look, I'm not a sycophant for celebrities or anything like that, of course. But there are some people who are just so famous that it's almost it's almost it's hard to almost think of them as just regular people, if that makes sense. And yeah. Kanye's sort of one of them. Do you know what I mean? He's he's a character. He's beyond. And then you see him walking in, and it's like, oh, it's just some dude. And then yeah. you think, well, he's just some dude with some stupid views. Who's who's who, and a who, bitch ex wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's kind of weird how um, I don't even know what I'm saying here, man. Maybe you can. No, I get it. Because I, I was at the Raptors game uh, in January and I mm. saw Drake. And I'm yeah. just sitting there like I had some pretty good seats. I think I was fourth row. He's up on the front seats, obviously. And I look over and I see somebody in a skidoo. Like, you know what skidoo is? No. OK, it's a brand. It's a Canadian brand for like um, uh, the, the sleds that automated sleds that you drive in the snow. Rolo has one. Okay, yeah. So Skidoo oh, right, is right, kind of right. like the Canadian brand. Everybody kind of laughs at it. But he was sitting there in a big puffer jacket like a rapper would, but it's Skidoo on the back. And I'm like, dude, that's the most Canadian thing ever. <laughs> but then my girls, because exp- I don't know much about Drake other than Degrassi Junior High. Mm, and so mm. my girls explaining, like, there was a kid there, a little autistic kid, and that's his kid. And then I looked over and like, so who's the mom? And she points out the baby mama. He knocked her up on a concert. And because it was good press, he decided to keep the kid and keep the girl around. He basically funds their lifestyle and stuff. And I realized, like... Drake's the most popular Canadian artist right now, arguably. Mm. And he's sitting here with a baby mama and a kid. He's got to take around to things and he's getting like, it's just the same bullshit life that everybody else has. Just like one level higher on the, the socioeconomic yeah. scale. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, su- I, I suppose what I was getting at is that we, our world is now, or our, our perception of reality, you know, we, we have these famous figures. We wake up, we yeah. read the paper, and, and these people have reached prominence. But it's easy for any idiot now to reach prominence, really, yeah. because of social media. Dude, you Tate know. was the most popular guy on the planet, and only because yeah. he just said he doesn't give CPR to men because he's not gay. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it, it's it's just... I, I don't know. I, I think just society is just heading in a very weird direction and, and probably not a very good direction when you've just got these crazy people who achieve extreme fame and extreme provenance through that craziness because sort of fall, it's so absurd. And then people just fall behind them, yeah, you know, and, and start worshiping them. And I, I suppose this is maybe we can tentatively tie this back to frame because you've got to be your own, you've got to be your own man here. Right. Haven't you? Don't just oh, fall behind somebody because they've got like a, a million fucking subscribers on YouTube. I will tie this into frame so well, Troy, I will, <laughs> I will make you proud, sir. I will make okay, you here proud. We go, here we go. Like, look at this. Like everything is safe. There's a reason that people are erratic like this is because they're bored and they're listless. And this is like excitement. I get it. Cause like when you were a kid in the nineties and you were watching wrestling, my brother and I would watch Hulk Hogan beat up the ultimate warrior. And then we'd fight each other in the living room. Like it pumps us up. You start yelling and screaming around your dogs, your dogs start jumping around and getting all hyper. So like we have like this, everybody's like this now, like full grown adults. 
And I would argue that's because you have no frame. Because if you have frame, like you can understand it for what it is. And it's just pro wrestling. Yeah. But in your own yeah. life, like I said, you go back to it, like if I can touch it, it's real. It, the wife is fighting with me. That's the same thing. What's the difference between Kanye being bigger than life and your wife yelling and screaming and losing her shit for whatever? It's mm -hmm. all just noise. And the only thing that gives it any validity in your life is if you choose to. Like, I yeah. don't really care about Kanye's DEFCON 3 against the Jews. I don't. <clears throat> it's fun, but I don't care. And if mm. my wife's yelling like, oh, if you don't, if you do the dishes, maybe I'd sleep with you more. And it's just, it's all fake. So if you can touch it, it's real. And if you focus on that, then mm. you realize like there's, the consequences are not where we drew that line. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm not going to do the dishes. I mean, I'm going to do them because I want a clean house, but I'm not going to do them because you promised me sex for them. Mm. Same thing. I'm mm. not going to lose my shit because Trump got elected. Because what's that going to do to me? Now, if Trump was Trump was in my house and he's like, if I get elected, I'll buy you a Bugatti. I'll be wearing the mega hat. But nobody's getting that. But then that's the problem. This is the nihilism part because you realize that all of this stuff doesn't exist. Like God is dead. Mm. So what do you replace mm. it with? Mm. And I would argue for the frame book, a lot of that is just giving guys, like not telling them what to believe, but showing them a process to find out for themselves what they deem important. Maybe yeah. it is kids. Maybe it's being, you know, Playboy. Maybe it's like being an author. Maybe it's, it's what, it, maybe it's, you just want to be the best figurine painter for 40K Warhammer out there. But it, mm -hmm. the thing is, it's nobody else's choice but yours. And then once you're focused to, to touch grass, I guess is the best way to put it, you build yourself your own worldview. And that's why when you see like goofy crap on Twitter now, I can just have fun with it because like it's outside of my frame. So it's either amusing, intriguing, or funny. Same with yeah. all the craziness. Do you, does it ever sort of annoy you anymore? Does does it, do comments ever get under your skin, or are you just like, yeah, whatever? <laughs> no, it's not even whatever. It's like I can't. How do I explain this? I'll use the Matt Walsh example. That's a good one, or mm. the Tate one, or the any. Actually, you know any of them. I'll use the Matt Walsh one. So he's sitting here. He's doing a story on me uh, about how I'm an asshole because I think it's not alpha to have kids. Now that's not what I said, and I know that's not what I said because I was very clear about what I said, and then right underneath it. I wrote an explanation for the people in the back who don't know how to read too well. <laughs> and then once he calls that a multi-tweet tirade, I'm like, he didn't even fucking read this. He has no idea what I said, why yeah. I said it. Mm, mm. But he does know about the F trophies for clout. Like, he understands that part because he's like, he had to justify why it was okay to use his kids to make money online. Mm, mm. But then I realized, like, he doesn't care about his honor. He doesn't care about his kids. He doesn't care about me. What he's doing right now is he's soapboxing to an audience in order to get clout. So yeah. how can you take that personally? Yeah. Like he's not, it's like, yeah, if Pepsi's advertising. It's the, what's the, what's the Pepsi logo again? The real thing. Remember that? Yeah. The old real yeah. thing logo. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you think Coke is sitting there going, I can't believe they said they're the real thing. We're the real thing. It's like, no, they're just like, that's not bad. It's a pretty good one. Well, it's but yeah, like, all this um, stuff. That's all I look at. It is like, it's all fake. Mm. I don't know. How could it, how could, how could fake things annoy you? True, true. Well, Pearl said something. I, I know. I, I don't know. You're probably not. Oh, speaking Pearl. of which, <laughs> yeah. you're, I, I'm sure you're. I, I'm, I'm sure you're not a Pearl fan. But she said something interesting once. She said, "She said I, I, I just regard people on the internet as, as like not really real." Yeah. You know? Well, see, that's why I dis I disagree with that because she's like, they're not really real. Like, there's real people, mm. and I get the idea of distancing, but that's what worries me. There's that psychological, um, what do they call it? It's not distancing, detachment, maybe. Anyways, it's for abused wives. When their husbands start to abuse them and they go off into their happy place, so they're right. not really there, and that's mm -hmm. how they emotionally cope. So I don't like that as a strategy, but I get what she's trying to do. Well, I th yeah, I mean, maybe the the con little bit of context is missing there. I think, I, I yeah. guess what she kind of meant was, you know, somebody slags you off. It's one way of compartmentalizing that is to say, these, these people, they're, they're not even really real. They're, they're because, yeah. because like, as, as to your point, you can't touch, you know, like somebody, somebody in America slags me off in a video. I can't, physically i mean he's well let's like, use I'm john anthony as a great example because both of us can't stand him and he's a piece of shit and he's useless but mm. we're never gonna meet this guy in real life he's never gonna do anything in real life he's just gonna sit there getting drunk at denny's <laughs> and the only reason he hates you is because he might get some more money and followers out of it that's the only reason well, yeah exactly exactly and then you've got you know people the you know the, our friend who makes the hit piece videos on everybody but he's going to narrow channel. it down buddy <laughs> you're gonna have to is that avon preach or, is that, Johnson, matter, or is that the the migtow guy <laughs> yeah you know like like um you know you, your whole channel is, is is hit piece videos on other on other people and uh, yeah. at that point you realize okay it's not actually it's this is pure promotion 
this isn't about I genuinely don't think this person's work is good. I genuinely think this person is not doing a good service to his audience or any of that. It's nothing to do with that. He doesn't care. Dude, it's I would love it if it was that. If it was yeah. that, that'd be yeah. great. That forced me to be better. Exactly. Well, like you said, um, everything is a psychop, as uh, Emily has said, which is kind of kind of true. I mean, it's not even a psychop. It's just people are, people are acting in their own interests. And a lot of the time, they're acting in their own commercial interests. Yeah, everybody's a drama yeah. nerd right now. Like, think mm. of it this way. When you ask me, does this ever get to you? Do you ever think during those wrestling promos when Jesse Ventura is getting yelled at by Ricky the Steamboat that he's like, damn it, Ricky? It's like, no, they go back in the locker room and do coke after this and have fun. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. Carl used to say it all the time when uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, the Iron Sheik, and uh, and uh, like Randy Savage got pulled over for being drunk driving with like coke in the car. And they're supposed to be like bitter enemies yeah. on wrestling. And you're just like, this is all I see now is this. Yeah. Just wrestlers on, except for we don't do coke anymore. All the brands on here, they're supposed to be doing that. What are they doing? I don't know. What's Tim Pool sleeping with? That chick's, the, the husband's wife there? Fuck. Mm. I got to pay it. This is actually a good example. It's Adam Krigler. I kind of, I got to met him through the grapevine and stuff. Mm. We talked a bit. And this was like a great watershed moment for me. I can't wait for other people to have it. Because he had his Tim Pool drama. I don't know if you know anything about this. I Vaguely. I don't know a huge amount about it. All right. Essentially, Tim Pool is just like a grifting asshole. He's sleeping with people's wives. And like mm. all of his talks about revolution. It's all fake. And for Ad and then Adam got fired out of all that. So that was like his ADJ moment. And mm. I got to be like right in the middle of all that drama. But I have no stake in any of it. And mm. so you kind of see how art like Tim Pool doesn't give a shit. Tim Pool's talking about, I'm 35 and I'll never find a wife. Meanwhile, he's schlepping Eliza Blue in his little thing, in his little hangout, living yeah. on his compound, sleeping with that Lydia chick while they're sitting there talking about saving the West. Adam's getting mad, and I'm just like, dude, this is awesome. I love not being part of this. <laughs> so it's and then I realized, like, if this is how I think of this one, imagine mm. what people think about our shit. Like, imagine seeing me and An Anthony Johnson or you having a dust up. Like, yeah. Would they take yeah. it seriously? Probably not, but some people would, but those people aren't going to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly, exactly. Actually, here's a question for you. Out of all the pickup artists, and you can't say John Anthony, mm. can I lump you in with those? You don't mind? Just for the sake of this. For the sake of this, yeah. All right. Who's your least, who do you think is the least useful online brand? If you don't want to say, that's fine. It was like that uh, Corbin thing where you eat the eat the crap or you or you say the words. <laughs> <laughs> spill your guts or eat your lunch or whatever i don't know i don't know i think they're all useless really um right, i mean i don't enough. really i don't even know who's really i don't i genuinely don't really watch many many other sort of sort of dating coach brands to, to be honest because i find pure dating coach content pretty pretty boring really Do because how that. many times you know like oh here's six things to say to a girl in a coffee shop i mean it's like how many times can you really say that right dude number Would six you... surprises me <laughs> all right five <laughs> five's better isn't it for, for... <laughs> Five or three, three for Instagram. Um, yeah, but um, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I probably rather not say, or I don't even really know. Here, I'll I just mean, tell I... you, it's Rivlino. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, okay, I'll take this one about, for I you. about him. Yeah, greatest pickup artist ever. Eight girls in ten years, dude. One of my guys, he was laughing. He's like, "Wait, Rivlino's only slept with eight girls in ten years, and he's like the biggest pickup artist on Twitter." I'm like, "Yeah," and he goes. I've just been doing this since April and I'm already at seven. I was just laughing. Like, <laughs> random talk, talk, guy yeah. reads three Ryan Stone articles, goes out and gets like a Rivellino of success in like eight months. Oh, it made me laugh. Warmed my heart. And that's what I mean well, when I say this stuff's not real. Cause like all these people talking about the West is dying and this is dying and that's dying. And then you get one guy to go put in some effort and he's like, well, this is dying. I'm not, I'm not too mad about that. Let the West burn. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, there's, but but then on the other hand, I've also heard you say, I thought I think you said something very clever once, which was if it takes oh, you, that's not me. <laughs> it must have been someone else. If it takes you fifteen hundred women to work out to understand women, then you've got bigger problems than um, ability to pick up chicks. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, which I, mean, I thought it's was kind quite of a funny. different point. But but so so there's got to be there's a middle ground here, isn't there? Because if you're somebody who's a, a complete virgin and you're giving out dating advice, that's obviously bad. But at the same time. It's disingenuous and it's like a marketing technique to, to say that you need to have slept with 10, 10 million women in order to really get it. Because that's not true either. It's about your understanding of human nature and yeah. your ability well, to connect the dots. I mean, remember Taylor Burroughs? Oh, How God. many female dating coaches are out there that are basically 40-year-old spinters, can't get a man, and so they decide mm. to become dating 
relationship coaches and consultants. Mm. It's almost like a cope. Mm. It's like a guy calling himself an alpha male when he works at the gas station. Mm. Like it's it's he's trying to make you to believe in his fantasy. He's trying to believe himself. What's that? Walter Mitley? Is that the Walter guy who Mitley, thinks yeah. of himself as yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how I see those stuff. Mm. What's and your yeah, thing? And it proper? sucks too because if the audience like if you're teaching something, the guys you're teaching don't know it by definition. Otherwise they wouldn't yeah. be trying to learn. And so you don't know what's good advice, what's bad advice, what's a good system, what's a bad system. It's actually part of the part and frame where I even say, like, I wouldn't listen to me just because I wrote a book. And here's an example. Well, how high is scary? Like, a hundred wouldn't scare me. A thousand would scare me. Mm. Ten thousand would definitely scare me. That's like Genghis Khan numbers. <laughs> but yeah, like for these guys, they're leading the blind. And that's the problem is that, like, a bunch of guys will watch somebody given horrible dating advice that doesn't match up to anything. And yeah. then a couple of those guys will be like, well, I'm going to be a brand because I want to be popular in this group. Cause now that it's a group, you can rise in the hierarchy. Yeah. And that's how you get all these MGTOW. Like, did you ever see the black pill thing where it was, you know, the six foot, if you're not six feet tall, you are better off just dying a fire or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then somebody's like, well, if you're not six, two, it eventually got up to the point where somebody was like, if you're not six foot eight. And I was like, dude, there's like, <laughs> 30 people on earth who are six foot eight. What the fuck is your problem? <laughs> well, those are the only guys getting it all, all around the world. It's like Santa Claus every day. They got to go across the world, giving all those girls Christmas presents. And I'm just like, yeah, this is what happens when you buy into the brand too hard. You know? <laughs> well, I, I think people want, I mean, I, I remember saying a couple of years ago, um, it, grifting is not just about money because people think, oh, he's a grifter. Basically, he's trying to get money off the audience, which is obviously, yeah, that you can grift by financially. But I think you can also grift for attention and for clout. And I think that's what some of these black pill guys are doing. You know, they want people on their side. Whether they're making money out of it or not is irrelevant. They want, they just want you to love them. Please love me, Troy. Exactly. I'm the greatest black pill ever. I got an anime, <laughs> Avi. I hate whamming. Come on, man. Please. <laughs> I'm part of the butt fudger network. I'm what's that? Wheat waffles. By the way, I've never properly and publicly given you a blast of shit for that fucking wheat waffles thing yet. So I want to, I want to do that now. <laughs> what well, are I've you thinking? Of, <laughs> I've done a couple of, I've done a couple of things with wheat waffles. Me and Tusk have done a couple of things with wheat waffles. Actually. Oh man. It's like, it's like watching Tyson box a toddler. What are you doing, bro? <laughs> I'm just doing it for clout basically. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean well, no, I mean, I think he's a, I don't know, man. I mean, he's a, he's a misguided youth, isn't he, really? Um, yeah. But isn't he but... like 30? No. He's, he's no. younger than that. He's like 20. He's 23 or something. He's really Dude. young. I joined the um, military at 23, and I was a late bloomer. Like, Jesus. Mm, mm. <laughs> um, no, he's kind of... I, I don't know, really. I'm just... You know, I did a couple of things with him, but he's he's a... Yeah. yeah. No. I hope Should you don't mind. Yeah, I know. Look, I know you're a nice guy. So, like, I'll name names. That's fine. For me, it's... I really took to heart Rich's. Remember Rich's old advice, like don't work with retards and don't work with people who work with retards. Yes, it's it's been so good. And if I get a hint of like retard from anybody, like like I love how now I'm like <laughs> censoring it. But mm, mm. if I get a whiff of it, like I'd rather like get that out of the way right now. Yeah. No, fair enough. Fair enough. I get it. I get it. It makes it makes sense. Um, but I mean, I yeah, you do your thing your way. But yeah, it's all about frame. It's like, really, what do you want out of life? What is it you're trying to get? What's your worldview? What things do you value? What what are your boundaries? What are you willing to put up with? What are you not willing to put up with? Those are hard questions. A lot of people go their whole life and they never even ask themselves, like, what do you want? I know the craziest thing when I was still doing consulting way back in like first year Guy would the guys are really good at telling you all their problems. They'll give you a 20 minute mm. speech about yeah. why their wife is bad, their kids are horrible, their job is bad, and whatever. And then you ask them, okay, I have a magic wand. What do you want? And then they don't know. Like there was guys who would like just articulating their problems would kind of drive them to tears, which is kind of a, it's an awkward thing, but like it's it's crazy how common it is. Yes, that guys yeah, are really good at complaining, but articulating the problem is difficult. And knowing what you want as a solution is even more difficult. And so I thought there was a real need. And that was the purpose of the frame book. Eventually it started off as dread, but anyways. So yeah, just how do you like how to think, not what to think, how to think. And that's I why mean, every guy you shit on mm. just keeps telling you what to think. And I'm like, how about just how to think and you figure it out for yourself? Why are people so dogmatic about this stuff online though? Because I'm not 
telling anybody to you know become be a bachelor in their forties. I'm not saying yeah, this is what you sh- you must do. This is I mean I'm just like yeah, do what you want, man. But this is this is what I'm doing. This is what's worked for me. But why are the Matt Walshes of this world so? Do- well, I suppose he's got a political and religious perhaps. Yeah, but there's uh, guys that are doing it with like 300 followers too. So I get you. Hmm. I don't know. Does it matter? No, not really. They yeah. just are ourselves. And I, and I don't mean to be flippant for your question. It's a good question. But I was thinking about this, like guys, the Swiss watch guys, I hate them. You know, the ones that are like, they need to know what a girl's intentions are. They need to know everything mm. about sexual dynamics. They like treating it like a jigsaw puzzle. And if they put all the puzzle pieces in place, then they can look into the future and know exactly, like it's like a safety bubble wrap thing. Yeah. Where they understand yeah. women like putting together a Swiss watch. And then it never ends up well because they're so busy with their head up her ass trying to put the pieces together that they're just ignoring what's in front of them. Yes, exactly. Um, and yeah, I why think... is just a stupid question at that point? At that point, you're just navel gazing about why you're why you're failing. Yeah, because yeah. you're ignoring what's in front of you while the woman is ranting about doing the dishes, or you know, maybe we're just friends or whatever the fuck nonsense they're doing. People are stupid. <laughs> I know it's dismissive, but they kind of are. I mean, we're all stupid, but at least I admit I'm stupid. <laughs> well, listen, um, we've do- we've gone over an hour now. I'm going to have to go in a minute because I've got to uh-huh. go to uh, a- a- an evening appointment, unfortunately. But um... is that what we're calling them now? <laughs> Just tell me your name. You can do that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but it's been awesome uh, chatting. We haven't really we haven't done a show together for for ages. I really, really do miss you, Troy. I I, I always love you. same king, bro. Same king. Absolutely, man. And it's <laughs> the king now. I'm listening. I'm actually listening to Prince Harry's audiobook. I know it's like kind of cliche, whatever, but he did some. He did some good stuff. You know, when his military stuff was, you know, quite. It's the same impressive, but he he did some stuff. You know, he had Dude, an interesting. He was life. baller, man. Mm. Do you remember? Did you ever watch that that video of his where he was doing an interview and then the air raid siren going off and he just dropped it? He's like off to the chopper, ready to go take on some Haji. I was like, that's some cool shit. Like right there, that's grooming somebody for king kingship. And I'm yeah. really mad that you guys, that those Americans brought over that divorcee to mess up his life. <laughs> he was the exactly. coolest royalty for the law. Lo- like after that, I remember. I that. know. Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he was cool, man. Um, unfortunately, not now. But I'm listening to the book. I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's quite kind of interesting. Um, so anyway, on that note, so your book is out now. So d- just, just a quick question. So po- are you doing yeah. part two, Dread? Is that, is that coming out at some point? Or yeah, it's probably going to be next year. I'm taking okay. a break until April. So I'm trying not to write and I'm doing like Minecraft streams. I'm just goofing around. I don't really care. I've, I've earned the time off and then I'm going to get back into it. Technically, the manuscript is like half, over half done already because originally it was going to be one book. But then once it got to like 120,000 words, I'm like, that's like two books worth of words. So I split the book up. OK, so I'm going to go back to it, rewrite it, and then get editing again and then put it out again. Ideally, it'd be about January, I'd assume, to get it out. But we'll see. Are you still are you using Scrivener out of interest? Oh, dude. I, I'm telling you, you, get onto it. You'll never regret it. I'm on it. I've got it. I've got it because I'm working on something which I'm starting next week and I've got it. So, um, sorry, sorry, audience. This is a bit of a technical conversation, but I'm, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. so I'm going to start using it because yeah, I've got all the it. notes and everything and I want to put it all in. So I've got it all, you know. Well, between the notes, the corkboard, the fact that you can see pieces that are like, you don't do it like per chapter. I just do it per thought. So I can like move my thoughts around and like see in real time. And maybe it fits better here or fits better here. Yeah. All of it is so nice. Cool, man. No, looking forward to it. Good Dude, stuff. I'm looking right, forward so... to it. Like I, I don't know if you know this, but you've been you've been right there. I, I'm very for the last year. No, I'm, I'm I I know I'm very flattered by that, man. That's fantastic. So um, Ryan's got my book um, right beside Steve Rational Mail. Mail. Just right, to let but, you know, I mean, you, you can't really get get higher praise than that, can you? What I'm thinking about doing, by the way. Hmm. is actually reworking that book and doing an extended version of it and sort of and, and putting it out again because it's kind of bang on really what I'm teaching these days, which is I'm a guy in my 40s and, yeah. you know, this, this. so um, I'm thinking about uh, about going back to it and actually redoing it and, and, and probably extending it and stuff. Dude, it's useful. I guarantee you'll get more reward from it too because I'm no- one thing I notice about, because there'll be probably a lot of divorce guys we're getting back into the game will be loving that kind of stuff, but... Like they're fearless after their bitch wife runs them through the things. Mm. Like if you write it in there, they will try it and it will work. Cause I've seen, I've seen, I've seen your field reports, man, or your in in fields. Yes. God well, damn. I, I almost wanted to get back to the mystery DVs and see what I'm missing. Cause I wasn't that good at my best. I really wasn't. Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting cause we get quite a few guys. Um, I work with guys. There's, uh, there's a couple of different sort of 
uh, what do you call it? Like uh, client avatars. You know, I tend to work with sort of younger guys who maybe they've made money through tech or something or, or crypto or something like that. And, but, you yeah. know, they, they, they want to sort out their social skills. But then there's a this growing contingent of older guys and many of them have been divorced or they come out of a long relationship. And um, some of those guys, man, I mean, it's, it's you know, they could be <laughs> the same age as me or even or even a bit younger, but to come out now, into the dating field, you know, after having been on the shelf for, or, or married for 15 years. I mean, it's, it's pretty tough, man. Um, but I'm here to help. That's what I, that's what I do. That's, that's my, that's my gift to the world. And people don't know this, but you're actually like a writer. Like I, yeah. I write, but you're a writer. You were trained on this. You've worked in the industry. You know what the hell you're doing. I don't, <laughs> you do. <laughs> I know Thanks, you man. don't I like to brag it. about it, but it's true. You actually know how to write. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think that, did you like that book? Do you think that book's good? Do you like that? I book? like it. I like it. Yeah. I actually I haven't read it in about a year. Like I got it when it first oh. when uh, I first grabbed it last year. So I probably good. want to go back into it. And I do remember because we talked about it before, and you were mad that like I should have made it bigger. And I'm glad yes. you're finally doing that. Well, I think it I think it makes sense because I think of of the books that I've written so far, I think it's the most relevant to where I am now. So I think a sort of extended remix version of it um, will will be useful for people. So uh, just make it a whole new book. Heck with it. Yeah, I don't think because yeah. has anybody ever done that made like a second edition to a book and then it's basically doubled in <sighs> scope? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe I'll just maybe I'll just kind of re redo it and 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 um, I mean I've got loads of new material now anyway. Of, of, I should hope of, so at of, this of, point. Yeah, you're yeah, not ready yeah. to stagnate yet, Troy. You're way too young for that. No man, the degeneracy is only increasing. <laughs> I mean, last well, year getting rid actually, of the red zone, so you're gonna have to, it can't increase. They're getting rid of all the good spots. Well, last year, actually, I have to say, I say last, I mean, the last 12 months, for example, or even more than that, have been really some of the most degenerate of my entire life and, and some of the most um, successful in that in that area as well. So, you know, age is not a uh, um, a, a barrier to entry into the dating marketplace. Guys. Exfoliation. Look at that skin. Do you see this? Exactly. Skin? Look at his skin. I'm just saying, you look a lot younger than you do, and I don't know. Do you drink at all or no? Sometimes, no. Really... I've, I've I've knocked it on the head, mm. so that that really helps. That so really you laid helps. off the booze and you exfoliate. What else could you want out of life? Just goes exactly. to show you guys, lotion. I told you, moisturize. <laughs> exactly, and bicarbonate of soda. I clean my teeth with bicarbonate of soda. I used a toothbrush. That's, I'll try yours. <laughs> I'm only joking. That was an old rouge thing. Anyway, sure. listen, it's it's been great to have you on. Um, get If you guys haven't already, grab a copy of uh, Praxology, Volume 1, Frame. Or, or Is it Self-Actualization for Men? Um, uh, yeah, the full title is Praxeology, Volume 1, Frame, for the actual, actual, Self-Actualization of Modern Man. But just call it Frame or Praxeology, Volume 1. That's the easiest way yeah. to do it. Anyway, grab a copy. It's really good. I've been reading it um, over the last few weeks and on various planes and things like that. And it's a, it's a very, very good read. Very, very useful stuff. Uh, for both being in long-term relationships, but also for, for the guy, if you want to be a player, and, and, and just generally for life, because this is it's not just about women, guys. It's about no. life. Um, good stuff. All right, man. Well, thanks ever so much for coming on. And we will speak again very soon. Dude, are you going to be there Saturday or are you going to be gone? I'm not 100% sure yet. Who's doing it? It's Paul's um, doing it. I think it? Rolo just said he can't make it because he's going to be busy doing something. So it looks like somebody else is going to be picking it up the slack on this one. Either way, whatever. I always find out you're going to make it when you actually show up to the thing. So Indeed. if you surprise me, I'll, 